In this episode, we'll be talking about beet juice and the claims that it has endurance enhancing effects. You will learn about what properties beet juice has, how it's proposed to affect the body, what form and how much should you consume, what regimes you need to consider taking in order to maximize the potential beneficial effects. Is there certain athletes who will get more benefit and the potential health benefits and risks with consuming high amounts of beet. This topic is controversial. I've read multiple systematic reviews and articles, and there are some contrary findings. But what I'll be talking about is the general consensus. So why is there all this fuss about beetroot? Beetroot contains high levels of nitrates, fibre, antioxidants such as vitamin C and polyphenols. This leads to health benefits including improvements in digestion, immune system, blood pressure and anti-cancer and anti-inflammatory effects. However, it is the high nitrate levels and the effects on endurance performances that sports scientists are so interested in. Beetroot, in its solid form, contains in excess of 250 milligrams of nitrates per 100 grams of wet weight. Many of the sports studies have used 500 mils of beetroot juice as a protocol to their investigations. There are sport nutrition companies that sell a variety of concentrated beetroot related products high in nitrates. These include 400 milligram concentrated shots, super concentrated products that need to be diluted and beetroot crystals that get rehydrated with water before consumption or added to food. Alternative options for high nitrate foods include rocket, spinach and rhubarb, with rhubarb being the highest in value of 280 milligrams of nitrates per 100 gram wet weight. Juicing vegetables will increase the nitrate levels relative to its solid form. It also allows the individual to get the added health benefits from antioxidants such as polyphenols. As opposed to consuming uh, high nitrates through the form of crystals that relatively lack these micronutrients. When we consume beets, the bacteria in our mouth convert nitrate to nitrites. These nitrites then get absorbed into the blood system and a proportion is converted to a molecule called nitric oxide. It is actually this nitric oxide present in metabolically active tissues such as muscles and blood vessels that has been proposed to have the uh, physiological benefits for athletes. This pathway discussed is called the exogenous pathway. And an important rate limiting step is the bacteria conversion in the mouth of nitrates to nitrites. And it is for this reason that athletes who have the ambition of increasing their nitric oxide levels through exogenous consumption of high nitrate foods or drinks stop using mouthwashes in the days preceding their supplementation because the mouthwash can uh, decrease the level of bacteria and therefore reduce the conversion of nitrates to nitrites. Okay, let's talk about the physiological effects that makes scientists believe beetroot supplementation can enhance performances in endurance activities. This molecule, nitric oxide, is a potent vasodilator. What that means is it widens blood vessels diameter, which has an impact on the blood flow, increasing the blood flow to the tissues, i.e. the muscle. The increased blood flow to the muscles means more oxygen and more nutrients gets there, both of which are critical for aerobic respiration. It has also been observed that nitrate supplementation reduces the oxygen cost of exercise. It's not clear the mechanism, but it's been proposed that nitric oxide may make skeletal mitochondria more efficient at producing ATP. 
ATP, for those who don't know, is a biochemical store of energy that is used by skeletal muscle in order for muscle contractions and movements to occur. Furthermore, an alternative proposed mechanism that explains the reduced oxygen cost of exercise is that nitric oxide could improve the muscle contraction efficiency, resulting in less ATP being required for any given contractile force being produced. The combined effects of improved skeletal blood supply and therefore nutrient supply, in addition to the reduced oxygen costs of exercise, essentially translates into athletes having better exercise economy, or in other words, being able to work at higher intensities for longer. Scientific studies have demonstrated some support for these claims, with athletes who consume nitrate supplementation having better time trial performances and time to exhaustion outcomes. Beetroot juice, how much, when and what regime? The current scientific consensus suggests performance benefits are generally observed after acute nitrate bonuses of 310 milligrams to 560 milligrams. After ingestion, peak nitrite blood levels and associated performance benefits are observed within two to three hours from ingestion of beetroot juice. Therefore, an athlete may want to consume beetroot juice around 90 minutes before the event. Not all types of athletes should use the same supplementation regime. The scientific literature has highlighted an interesting observation. Not all people are responding in the same way to nitrate supplementation. What is becoming apparent is elite athletes don't tend to get the endurance benefit from an acute bolus compared to recreational athletes who do. The proposed explanation for this is that, as you would expect, elite athletes have a significantly higher level of aerobic training, which leads to higher baseline levels of nitrate, nitrite and nitric oxide. This has come about due to upregulation of the enzymes that are involved in the endogenous nitric oxide pathway. The higher baseline levels and greater activity of the endogenous nitric oxide pathway means elite athletes are less likely to get benefit from a one-off acute bolus preceding the event. So these performance gains that certainly appear to be harder to be obtained in the elite athlete could be combated with an alternative regime. A regime has been suggested for this cohort that a prolonged period of supplementation that exceeds three days before the event could have some significant benefits for this group. For example, the athlete would consume beetroot juice containing around 400 milligrams of nitrates every day for at least three days before the race. At present, the evidence suggests that short duration endurance events of less than 30 minutes duration are most likely to benefit from the ergogenic effects of nitrate supplementation but benefits have also been seen in longer duration activities. So how much performance gains can an athlete expect to get from consuming beetroot juice? Well, the truth of that answer is that it's very difficult to, to say at this point. There's not enough scientific studies focusing specifically on um, the sub cohorts or the variables there, such as the activities they do, whether they're elite or recreational athletes. I've already talked about health and performance benefits of beetroot juice. Now I want to focus on the potential side effects and health implications of beetroot juice ingestion. Red stools and urine after eating beetroot is not uncommon. Do not be alarmed. It is attributed to the high levels of a pigment called betanin, this is not harmful and is a side effect that should resolve on stopping ingestion of beets. Beetroots are high in oxalates. The most common form of kidney stones in 80% of cases are caused by the formation of calcium oxalate crystals and therefore beets should be avoided in these people 
who have had previous stones to reduce the likelihood of reoccurrence of stone formation. There has been some concerns raised of potential increased risks of cancers from long-term high nitrate consumption. Nitroamines and nitroamides formation from high nitrate consumption is where the concern has arisen. These molecules are within a class of molecules referred to as N nitroso molecules, which are known for potential carcinogenic effects. Nitrates and nitrite salts have been added to meats for some time as a preservative agent. There are epidemiological studies that have shown association with increased nitrate ingestion and occurrence of some cancers. Furthermore, ingestion of red meat and association of colon cancer has been established. No causative factor has been identified, but the formation of nitroamines has been of concern. Here is the pathway for the formation of these carcinogenic molecules as a consequence of high nitrate consumption. These molecules have the potential to cause DNA damage and lead to cancers. What you can see is that antioxidants such as vitamin C and phytochemicals such as flavonoids or polyphenols are protective and inhibit the formation of these carcinogenic molecules. It has been argued that because of the levels of phytochemicals and vitamin C, that people taking nitrates in the form of beetroot juice supplementation don't need to worry about the formation of n nitroso compounds and their potential carcinogenic effects. However, there has been a study which has suggested that this is not quite the case. Ferens et al. 2019 compared two groups of individuals over an eight-day period. One cohort was given the beet it 70 ml shot containing 400 mg of concentrated beet juice and vitamin C tablet of 1000 mg, whereas the other group was given the beetroot juice alone. They took their regime daily for seven days and the n nitroso levels in the urines of the individuals was measured. The group who received vitamin C and beetroot juice did show statistically significant inhibition of n nitroso compounds in the urine on day two after the first dose of beetroot juice compared to the other group who just had beetroot juice on its own and had higher levels of n nitroso compounds in their urine. This would give some support that taking a vitamin C tablet or antioxidant could inhibit the formation of these carcinogenic molecules after an acute single bolus. However, what they noticed was that after the full seven-day cumulative doses, there was no such inhibition of these n nitroso urine compound levels. The two groups did not have statistically significant differences in levels, indicating that people who take beetroot juice long term are going to have the formation of these n nitroso compounds. This is alarming data and suggests that people who are taking beetroot juice long term are at risk of n nitroso compound accumulation and potential carcinogenic effects. With increasing numbers of people using these supplements, it would be sensible to do further research into potential long-term risks. And I'm surprised that the industry hasn't made it more clear for people that the potential risks associated with long-term nitrate supplementation. Currently, the research isn't there to make an informed risk assessment at present. However, if you are an individual who wants to use beetroot juice supplementation or other high nitrate supplements, it would be sensible to take some precautions to mitigate possible harmful effects. I would only drink natural beetroot juice, as this will have protective benefits of the phytochemicals and vitamin C, which acts as antioxidants. I would avoid taking nitrate crystals as these have less concentrations of these protective molecules. I would consume high vitamin C ingredients with the beetroot juice, such as orange juice, lemon or lime juice, which you could add as part of a smoothie, for example. 
I would not consume any meat at the period around consuming the beetroot juice as meat has high levels of um, amine groups, which is needed in the formation of nitroamines. If you are going to take it, it's probably cautious to take it for short periods of acute boluses only in targeted ways before competitions and to avoid long-term use. The data suggests an isolated single acute bolus with vitamin C is likely safest protocol to avoid n nitroso compound formation. However, as previously said, the research just isn't there to make an informed risk assessment at present. Ugh.